Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm Dima. Hi everybody. Uh, I'm obsessed with C++. Uh, I'm obsessed with Stack Overflow. And uh, this is this is basically why uh, that this talk came about. Uh, it was uh, inspired by a question on Stack Overflow. Fairly simple question. Somebody somebody wanted to know how they can keep a, a pointer to a function and not have to worry about the return the return type. Uh, and while uh, their use case was uh, pretty simple, uh, it got really fun when you start trying to generalize it, elaborate on it, uh, and basically support the uh, more uh, more and more uh, sorts of uh, callbacks and functional style programming. Uh, so yeah, so I'm hoping so I'm hoping to be a bit a bit interesting. Um, now uh, I want to start off the bat. Uh, I said polymorphism and I know when it comes to definitions, every developer uh, has a definition that they know and love. And we love uh, to argue about our definition. So I just start right away that I'm talking about polymorphism in the sense that we have a single interface and a bunch of different entities. Uh, and the interface provides access to all of them. Uh, and in this case, the entities are callable objects, uh, just something with operator brackets. Um, function pointers, uh, function objects, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and the uh, common interface is std function, and uh, and and what it provides. Uh, I'm not going to dive uh, too deeply into std function itself. It's uh, almost magic uh, for the for the purposes of this talk. Uh, but uh, when you start playing with it, you sort of discover that it's a fairly handy utility and it's quite flexible. So a short introdu introduction. It's a class template from the C++ tiny library, STL if you prefer. Uh, it can store any copyable thing that you can call like a function. And um, it's, it's, it's a copyable thing itself that can be called like a function, obviously. Uh, and uh, basically you just tell it what interface you want to support and you get an object that stores other objects. So as the function void double would be, this can basically hold any function object that I would return nothing from and we'll feed it a double. Uh, and I chose my words carefully here because as the function is a bit magical, uh, it erases the type of the thing it holds. That's how it provides its sort of polymorphism. Uh, and uh, when you play with it, you can uh, you can do pretty cool stuff. Uh, when you call something uh, through the std function, uh, it's type safe or as type safe as C++ uh, can be. Uh, it accepts any arguments and tries to pass them on. Uh, if it works, it works. If it's impossible, meaning they cannot be converted, it fails. Uh, and it handles the return value from the from the from the entity it holds, pretty pretty in a pretty clever way. Uh, it either implicitly converts it, or it entirely discards it. And it discards it in a in in a safe way. It's not like uh, calling a function pointer returning int through a function pointer returning void. If you've heard the term undefined behavior being thrown about, uh, that's not it. Uh, and it's pretty flexible. Uh, 
And uh, I just want I just want to say one thing. Uh, I forgot to mention at the start. If you want to stop me and ask a question, uh, just go ahead. Uh, I think it's uh, I think a discussion will be far more interesting than any anything I can blab on about for however however long. Uh, so yeah, please feel free. Uh, and now going forward, uh, we can basically use a std function to hold something that returns whatever, and we can simply not care. Uh, we declare a function uh, returning void accepting an int, and here I assign a lambda to it that just acts as a doubler. I mean, it's it's a silly example. It's empty work because the value is discarded from the from the function object. But uh, in the same vein, I can assign it a functor that returns a string, like a std string, a proper object. Uh, it's again, if you're worried about uh, about optimization, it's obviously <laughs> it's obviously not very fun code to watch because I'm constructing string objects uh, from here until tomorrow. Uh, for no purpose, uh, but uh, I hope you can see that the function, the destiny function, handles it just fine. It doesn't, as long as you declare that you want to return void, it will allow you to assign a function object that returns anything, and it will discard it simply and cleanly. Uh, and just to you know to wrap it up, it's. STD to upper, it's like a, a, a regular function. Uh, it can hold that just fine as well. Uh, if you dig into it, there's going to be a static cast to void uh, somewhere deep in the internals. That's pretty much how, how we discard stuff in regular code, in general, in generic code. And it's basically, is basically how it accomplishes the simple uh, goal of discarding the value. Uh, so that's basically if we're trying to support any callback with any type, and we don't really care about the type. And it's, it's incredibly flexible. Now, as far as the question that we started from, uh, wanting to support one of several types, uh, well, you can do that. With, you cannot do that with SD function alone. Uh, you need a bit more work. And if you're thinking about a return value that is one of several types, you're probably thinking about a union. And we can compose uh, SD function with STD variant. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into what STD variant is or how it does its work. Uh, suffice it to say, it's another standard library component. It's like a union. It keeps track of what it holds. And you can convert implicitly to a variant uh, from anything that is convertible to what it holds. So if we go back to the original question of an std function that can return a double or an int, uh, you'd write it like this, basically. It accepts a double, returns one of two types, uh, and you can, again, assign anything that you can build this variant from into the function. So, for instance, uh, assigning it one of the overloads of std abs to return the absolute value, uh, assigning a, a small function object that uh, truncates uh, that yeah that tr truncates uh, the input into an integer. All of those will work as long as you can build the return type. You can assign your function object to an std function, and it will handle uh, and will handle any conversion seamlessly. Uh, Dima. Yeah. Can you explain what the static cast of std abs does? I don't understand this. Yeah, it's uh, well, std abs is overloaded, which means uh, because because uh, std function itself 
uh, can be constructed with anything. You can't just pass an overload set into it because the constructor is a template. And to avoid the error, I, I, I mean, there's some, there's some pretty ugly types in the, in the target type of the static cast that I figured I just, uh, I'll just avoid mentioning, but I just, I didn't want you to be caught unaware if you try, if you try this at home and it fails because this the function cannot be constructed. You have to choose the actual overload you want and the static cast does that. Yeah, so the ellipsis is really a, a particular overload. Yeah. Uh, specifically, uh, you know, the, the one uh, returning a double and accepting a double. I think uh, uh, that's the one that works here. Um, and yeah, it's basically, it's basically, I think, a cute example of uh, how the standard library uh, composes with itself. Uh, because uh, I think I heard somebody say, and it's a gimmick, if, if the STL does not sort of solve your problem, the solution is more STL uh, one way or another. And uh, this, is, this is pretty much uh, a neat solution to, I mean, it's a bit of an over-engineered solution to the original problem. Uh, the person in the original question wanted to store different function pointers. Um, but if you want to support a functional interface of various sorts, of various return types, you can do pretty, some pretty crazy stuff. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I think... a, question, a question regarding the STD apps. I yeah. don't remember if STD apps is an addressable function in the C++ 20 specification. Uh, but the question is, uh, can you uh, assign uh, a non-addressable function to STD function? Uh, let me just when second that. Explain what an addressable function is. Uh, I, I just want to point out, I recently read, uh, taking the address of an STD function is undefined behavior. Unless, ex unless it's explicitly allowed. Uh, yeah, I sort the I sort of skimmed over that part. Sp generally speaking, unless the standard says you can take the address of a function explicitly or implicitly, uh, you can't. Uh, and it's not so much undefined behavior uh, as much as uh, the standard reserves the right to add overloads. That, uh, that are undocumented. Sorry, not the standard, the standard library uh, implementation reserves the right. And so if you try to play games with, uh, with functions that the standard doesn't say you can, you can take their address, uh, your code immediately becomes less portable. Um, now, my relationship with the standard is like the relationship of a criminal with the law. I know it and I try to avoid it whenever I can, if, uh, if this little bit of humor makes sense. Um, it's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not remembering right off the bat what goes with STD abs, uh, but even then, uh, this, this is a pretty easy to solve and work around, just stick it in a lambda. You yeah, can, I have a question. Could you stick a polymorphic lambda in a function? Uh, yeah, you could. Uh, I mean, I focused on the return type, uh, but std function plays well with the argument types as well. Uh, the the argument the parameter types we provide is what the std function uh, accepts, but it then tries to forward them to the whatever functor it holds. And so as long as it can accept them, the the function will be happy. So it's, it's really great as, a, as, a, as glue code for functional uh, style coding. Uh, it's really versatile and it's really cute. Uh, I, I think I'm showing my bias here, but yeah, uh, it's a great little type to, to work with. Um, 
Right. So I, another I would... Comment, sorry, another comment on, on the non-addressable uh, functions. Uh, so if, if the standard doesn't say that uh, a function is addressable, uh, then it is not, or you cannot assume it is. Mm -hmm. And I think the other reason is that uh, it might be inline. So uh, it might not have an address at all. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of orthogonal, you know. Inline is more like a linkage specifier. It's less about force inlining. Uh, if I mean, as far as I'm aware, if we're putting the standard aside for a second, yeah. If you don't take the address of a function, a half decent compiler that inlines it everywhere will not emit a function definition. But if you do, it has to because the standard says so. A function is an address. So it's very, it's very like, it's very independent to inlining. Uh, even inline functions that are uh, present in every translation unit and have to be exactly the same. Uh, if, you take, if you take its address, you get a valid address. And the compiler and linker then has to figure out, okay, where's the definition? This better work. Uh, so it's it's independent. Okay. Uh, the problem again with standard addressable functions is not so much their ability to be inline. Uh, I mean, if you're coming from C, some of the standard C functions can be macros, and then you can't uh, you can't take their address. Period. Uh, if you're coming from a C++ background, if you're addressing something in uh, namespace STD, it can be a macro. So on the face of it, it could be addressable. It might not be because the standard doesn't allow it. But even then, if you, if you read the, the verbiage about in C++20 about addressable functions, it doesn't go so far as to say the behavior is, is undefined. It says, the results are unpredictable or something like that, uh, which uh, I know it's not, it doesn't sound much different than undefined behavior, but it sort of feels to me like it's trying to take a softer approach to this. I think uh, uh, there, there's something called unspecified behavior, which means it might be defined per vendor. Mm -hmm. it, it might be defined per vendor. Uh, the vendor has to document it, I think, or not, I, I don't recall. Uh, but, uh, you know, undefined behavior is only undefined in the scope of the standard. I mean, uh, if you, if we take another example, uh, you can, ca you can't implicitly convert a function pointer to a void pointer, an object pointer. You need to do it with a cast and the standard doesn't promise you don't lose, uh, precision. You might lose the original pointer if you uh, sorry, the standard promises you can convert back and get the original pointer, but it's implementation defined. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you look at another standard that includes C++ or tries to include it anyway, like POSIX, then POSIX says void pointers and function pointers are convertible and you have to get the correct result. So to say that something is undefined behavior well, it depends on who you ask. Uh, I think uh, I think the the key here is that it depends on how far reaching you want your code to be, and if you're trying to be as portable as possible, then you need to be mindful of what is undefined according to the C uh, C++ standard itself. Uh, but if you're aiming at a specific platform or a family of platform like POSIX, then you can probably re rely on things that POSIX defines. Uh, am I making sense or am I rambling? Yeah. Um. Right. So just in case you want to get a feel of how, uh, of how the STD variant works here, you can write the tag union yourself. Uh, it's not too difficult to write or to follow. Uh, and basically, uh, std function returning this result 
uh, will work just the same as the std function returning the variant previously to answer the question we started with. Uh, it's obviously not pleasant code to write, so I recommend using variant or boost variant if you're stuck in pre C17 days. And uh, yeah, that's basically a, a C function on, on one leg. Um, so yeah, if you have any more questions, uh, I'd love to talk about it.